Should you use character arrays or string objects? The answer might surprise you. Let's start with the basics. I will define a character array called character array. I can leave the square brackets empty and then the length will be defined by the length of my string. However, I could also define the length inside of the squared brackets. And in this case, it should be at least of length six because the string will be terminated by an additional character, which is backslash zero. You can learn more about this in this video. But for now, I will remove it. And this is my character array. However, there's a different way to do this. Now, the second option that we have is to use a string object. And so I can define an object of class string. I will call it string object. And it is equal to hello. At this point, if you don't know what an object is, it doesn't really matter. In fact, we already used objects in the past and you didn't even know. So for now, just remember that there is two different methods how to store a string. And the first one is a character array and the second one is a string object. Both store the same text, but they're fundamentally different. A character array is a very simple structure. It is just a sequence of characters in the memory, while a string object is a more complex data structure. First, let's look at how you can find out the length of a string. To find out the length of my character array, I can use string length. This is a built-in function that you can use to find out the length of a character array. You just insert the character array as an argument. It returns the length. So we can define an integer variable called character length. And this is our length. Let's output this. And the length is five. But if you use size off, our character array, then we see that the character array actually requires six bytes in the memory because of the string termination. All right, so how can we do this with the string object? Well, the string object works a little bit different. A string object has built-in methods. If we want to find out the length of the string object, we can do it like this. String object dot length. So this calls a method of our object. It is basically like a function and it returns the length of the string object. can store it inside of string length and then we output it. And so we also get back the number five for the length of the string. And if we take a look at the size, Size of also returns the number six, but in this case it's wrong because this only reflects the string that is stored inside of the object. But the object itself is bigger. If we, for example, just declare a character array and then we compile it and we can see how much memory it uses. 
So if you use a character array, then the global variable uses nine bytes of the dynamic memory. However, if we are using a string object with the same content and you see the global variable uses 25 bytes of dynamic memory. So it's not the same inside of the memory. The character array is more memory efficient. Let's try something else. I would like to add some text to my string. How can I do this? So with the character array, we run into a problem. Let me show you how it works. So with the method called string cat, you can concatenate two strings. And what we want to do is we want to add this string to this character array right here. But if we do it like this, then we actually run into a huge problem because there is not enough space inside of character array. Because character array has a length of five and a size of six, so it's not possible to add additional characters to this array. We could increase the size. So I could, for example, define a character array of size 20, and then there is enough room for more characters. And then we can serial.print the character array and see what happens. This looks good, hello world. But if I remove this, it also works, but it's dangerous because now we're using memory that is not allocated for our variable. And this can easily corrupt data. So we need to avoid this. And one way to avoid things like that is to use objects. So if we use the string object, it's very easy to add text to the string object. You can do something like this, string object plus equals world. It's like adding a number to another number. Now we add a string to another string. And then we just serial dot print. Let's add a new line and string object. And there we go. Hello world, hello world. Looks way cleaner than this weird function here. And you don't need to worry about the size. It dynamically allocates memory for you. And sometimes we want the opposite. We want to get a substring. For example, I would like to copy the word world out of the string and store it into another string. How can we do that? With the character array, I can define another character array. I call it substring. The length will be one, two, three, four, five plus termination. So six. And then how can I copy the word into my substring. So this happens with this weird function right here. So it copies a substring of a given character array into another character array. So the target is substring. This is where we would like to store the substring. And we would like to copy it out from character array. If you watched my video about characters and pointers, you already know that character array in this case actually is a pointer to the first byte of the character array. And so if we offset this pointer by one, two, three, four, five, six, then we jump to world. And this is exactly what I would like to copy. The size, so the length is one, two, three, four, five characters. And then we can serial print 
the substring world question mark. So here comes your exercise. What's wrong with this code? Why do we get world question mark? I would expect world. What we're missing here is the termination character inside of our substring character array. So the last character should be backslash zero, our termination character. And the last character can be accessed by using substring at index five, because we start with zero. It's zero, one, two, three, four, and then five is the termination that shouldn't be printed. And the termination character is backslash zero. It looks like two characters, but it's actually one character. It's a special character that isn't printed. And so let's upload this new sketch and now we don't get the question mark anymore. Perfect. And now with string objects it's easier than that because we just define a second string object. I will call it substring object and it is equal to string object dot substring and then we just define the index of the substring, so where it begins and where it ends. But it's actually the next character that is not included in the substring. So let me show you what I mean. It's 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So we start at 6 and then we go to 7, 8, 9, 10 is the last index that we want and so we put in 11 and then we print it substring object and we get the same thing and you see this is a lot cleaner you don't need to terminate the end of the string you don't need to worry about memory allocation so this is way easier the next thing is finding text. For example, I would like to find the word world inside of my character array. How can I do that? Well, there is a function called str str and it finds the first occurrence of the substring in the string. And it takes a pointer to a character array. So we add the character array right here and we can put in world like this and it also works and it returns a pointer to a character inside of the character array, of course. So it returns a character pointer and I call it found. If it doesn't find anything, then it's a null pointer. And so we need to first check if it found anything. And so I can check if found, then we can actually calculate the position. But for now, I will just serial print. Um, we found something and else we found nothing. Okay, let's try this. Yeah, semicolon. And so let's see, we found something, great. So world was found, but if we search for Arduino, for example, this is not contained in the string. So let's see what happens now we found nothing. However, if we find something, then I would like to know the exact index at where this word is. So if we search for world, I would like to get back the index of world inside of my character array. So I would expect zero, one, two, three, four, five, six. 
six should be returned. And so we need to calculate this. How can we calculate this? Well, found is a pointer, character array is also a pointer. And the difference between these pointers indicate the index. And so we can calculate it like this. We can subtract the pointer that points to the first character inside of this character array from the found character, because the found character is bigger. The result is the position. And then we print it. And as expected, it returns six. So if we search for hello, then it returns zero. This is exactly what we want. And now let me show you how to do it with the string object, because this is way easier. Integer position equals string object dot index of and then we just add world. And then we print it. So this is way, way easier. And as you can see, the same result. So to sum everything up, manipulating character arrays is a bad idea. So if you have dynamic text that changes, you should use string objects whenever it's possible. However, if you're using fixed text inside of your project, then you should consider using character arrays because they are more memory efficient. And one last thing, if you have a big Arduino project and you ran out of RAM, but you're using string objects, then it might save your project to actually switch to character arrays. Of course, you have to consider all these things like pointers and termination of character arrays, but you will get a more memory efficient solution. If this video was helpful, please like and subscribe to this channel if you're ready to dive deep into the world of Arduino. Please put your questions and suggestions in the comments. Thank you for watching. See you in the next lesson.